Welcome to Maine General Medical Center's Joint Replacement Program Education for Patients. My name is Martha Hunt, Nurse Orthopedic Coordinator for Maine General, and I am here to help guide you through the program. First, let's talk about getting ready. Arrange for some help at home, somebody who can be around to do chores around the house, run errands for you, or go out and pick up groceries. Now to get your home ready before you have surgery, pick up any scatter rugs that are in the walkway. If you have electrical cords going across the walkways, make sure to move them so that they're not a tripping hazard. Clean up any clutter in the area that you will be recovering in so you have plenty of room to get around with a walker. Consider grab bars in the bathroom if you have a hard time getting in or off the toilet or in and out of the tub or shower. If your bedroom is upstairs, consider having your bedroom on the main level of your home if able. It may be easier for you to stay on the main level for the first week that you are home. Have someone help you set this up. If you don't have this option, don't worry. You will be able to go up and down stairs. Just go up when you're ready to go to bed and down when you're ready to be on the main level in the morning. It is helpful to prepare some food ahead of time. If you have any leftovers, prepare them in small portions and put them in the freezer. That way you can warm up things in the microwave or oven for a quick meal when you get home. Also get some healthy snacks ahead of time to have around your home. Other preparations that you may want to do is if you have things down low or up high that you use frequently, put them on a good working level ahead of time so it will be easier for you to reach them. Have ice available because whether you have a hip or a knee surgery, you will be using ice to help with comfort. If you have pets at home and they will be alone while you're at the hospital having surgery and recovering, make sure that someone else is looking after them. Whether you have them in a kennel or you have someone else coming into your house to care for them. And if you're the primary caregiver for a loved one, make sure that someone else is taking care of that loved one while you're at the hospital and then at home. Prepare on your body. Keep all pre-op appointments and exam. Stop any medications as advised by your provider. The most common one to stop is ibuprofen products such as ibuprofen, naproxen, Advil, Aleve, and Motrin. You should stop taking these products two weeks before your surgery. You may take Tylenol or acetaminophen in place of these products. Have your lab work and EKG done before your pre-op anesthesia appointment. Each patient is scheduled for a pre-op anesthesia appointment one to two weeks before surgery. Have any elective dental care or cleanings done before your surgery. After surgery, you should wait 12 weeks before having any dental work done. So if you have an appointment scheduled six weeks after your surgery, for example, you will need to call and reschedule it. You will also need to take an antibiotic one hour before any dental work is done. You can get this prescription from your orthopedic surgeon. Quit smoking if you're a smoker. As smoking interferes with healing, maintain a healthy diet and do what exercise you can do. So if you're able to get up and walk or if you're able or if you're in a swim program, Keep that up. If your physician has sent you for physical therapy, do whatever exercises your physical therapist has recommended. These are some preoperative exercises that are simple to do and that we would like you to do before surgery. They are also found in your white binder on page 21. Your white binder is also known as your journal. Ankle pumps. Bend your ankles up and down. Repeat 10 times. Do this exercise in the morning and at night. You can also do this exercise while you're sitting in a chair and watching TV. Gluteal sets. Tighten up your buttocks like you're going to hold in a bowel movement. Hold for 5 seconds and repeat this exercise 10 times. Do this in the morning and at night. While a diagram shows a person lying down, you can do this exercise while sitting in a chair. Quad sets. Lying on your back, you have your leg out straight and then push your knee down to the floor or mattress and hold it for five seconds. Repeat ten times. 
This exercise tightens up your thigh. These are all things that help strengthen the muscles and help move your legs. You will also be doing these exercises after surgery, but we also like you to practice them before. Chair push-ups is the only pre-op exercise. S sitting in a chair with your arms, push yourself up from the chair using only your arms and repeat this exercise 10 times. It is helpful to do this exercise in the morning and at night. You will be using your arms actively to help you do this after surgery, so you don't actually practice this after surgery. Preventing infection. All of the things listed below play a part in preventing infection. The number one thing you can do is to practice good hand washing. If you're a diabetic, have your blood sugars well under control. We look for being under 200. Maintain a healthy weight. Stop smoking. Dental exams should be done before surgery. After surgery, they need to be done 12 weeks after your surgical date with an antibiotic taken an hour before. Pre-surgery scrub. Your orthopedic surgeon should have given you antiseptic wash to use the night before surgery and the morning of surgery. Do not shave your legs for three days prior to surgery. We don't want patients getting a cut, nick, or scratch on their surgical leg because it could delay surgery. This is Maine General Medical Center's Alphon Center for Health in Augusta. This photo shows the main entrance to the building where you will enter. There is valet parking available from 6.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. if you would like to take advantage of it. As you enter the Alphonse Center for Health, the Welcome Center is right in front of you. People are available to help if you have any questions or are unsure about where you're going. The ACH also has volunteers who can guide you to where you're going. Just to the left of the Welcome Center is a set of elevators that you will be taken up to the second floor for your pre-op testing with anesthesia and the same elevators you will be taken when you come in for surgery. Once you get to the second floor, step out of the elevator, turn left and walk to patient registration located to your right. This is where you will register for your pre-op testing and this is also where you will register the day of surgery. Once you have registered, walk back past the elevators until you see a green wall on the right with a sign that says pre-admission testing and endoscopy. This is the first section you come to on the right. This is where you will go to see the anesthesiologist for your pre-op appointment. Bring your medications in your original containers for review with the nurse during this pre-op visit. The anesthesiologist will review your medical history and discuss a plan that will be best for you for surgery. The anesthesiologist will discuss spinal and general anesthesia and ask you if you've had anesthesia in the past and whether you had complications and ask you what worked best and what didn't work. The anesthesiologist uh, most often will recommend spinal anesthesia. If you're having knee surgery, the anesthesiologist will also discuss a nerve block around the knee that's done the day of surgery, before surgery, to help control post-op pain. During your appointment, you will also receive a list of any medications to take the morning of surgery. A same day surgery nurse will call you the day before surgery with the time you need to report to the hospital. If you will be having surgery on Monday, you will receive a phone call on Friday somewhere between noon and 3 p.m. You are allowed to eat solid food until midnight the night before surgery. After midnight, you're allowed to drink clear liquids only up until two hours before surgery. Clear liquids include water, black coffee, black tea, apple juice, cranberry juice, and Gatorade. You cannot drink anything with milk or pulp in it. Pack your suitcase with comfortable clothes such as pajama bottoms, shorts, loose fitting pants, elastic waist pants, anything that will be loose on your hips or knees. 
Other comfortable clothes include t-shirts, nightgowns, bathrobes. You will be getting dressed while you're in the hospital. People tend to feel better in their own comfortable clothes rather than lying around in a hospital gown. One part of your therapy at the hospital after your surgery is to work with an occupational therapy to get dressed so that you know how to do it properly and safely. Make sure to pack something that you like to do or something that will bring a smile to your face. A photo of a loved one, a magazine, a book that you're reading, electronic games, laptops, smartphones are allowed. So anything like that is acceptable to bring with you. What to bring in on admission? A photo ID, insurance card, they have this information already but may ask to see your card. An advance directive if you have one. This is a living will regarding your health care. Your current medication list because someone will ask you when you're being admitted what your current medications are even though you already went over this during your pre-op visit. They will verify with you that this list is still correct. You should have the medications, the dosage, and how often you take them on this list. A CPAP. If you have a machine that helps you breathe at night, you should bring in your own machine with you. Comfortable clothes. No jewelry. We allow you to keep a ring on if you're not able to get it off or do not want to take it off. The surgical staff will cover it with tape before surgery. All other jewelry needs to be removed. If you have contact lenses, they also need to be removed. We also ask that you bring in your joint replacement journal, the white binder, because you may receive more information while you're at the hospital and you can put that information in your binder. It also has blank pages in the back where you can write things down. On the day of your surgery, please arrive at the hospital just a little before your scheduled time Take the elevator in the lobby up to second floor, turn left off the elevator, straight to patient registration which will be on your right. After you have registered, go directly across the hall to same day surgery waiting room. Wait there until somebody comes to get you. You will be taken to an area that looks something like this. Your coach or support person is welcome to come along with you to get ready. When you're in the room, a nurse will take your blood pressure, temperature, pulse, and review the medication that you're currently taking. You will change into a hospital gown. Your personal belongings will be labeled for safekeeping and put away. The nurse will start an IV and give you medication to help you relax. You will also have a cardiac monitor put on you and the anesthesiologist and surgeon will visit you before you go off to surgery. If you are having spinal anesthesia, the medication will be administered while you're in the room right before you go off to surgery. If you are having a knee replacement, the nerve block that I talked about earlier will be administered here as well. The surgeon will confirm with you what leg he is operating on and mark his initials and other markings on the leg. At this point, your support person will go back to the waiting room and you will go to surgery. You will be taken to one of our orthopedic surgical rooms. It is a very large, bright room with a lot of equipment. It tends to be very cool. The surgery time varies based on the procedure, but patients usually are in the surgical room for one to two hours. Your family members will stay in the waiting room where you checked in and the surgeon will speak to them when your surgery is over. They often will take a phone number and to call family members after surgery and sometimes the surgeon will go out and speak to them in person. The dressing that will be used after surgery is shown on this page. It is a waterproof dressing that is designed to stay on for up to 14 days after surgery. It has a medicated pad with silvidine, which helps protect, protect it against bacteria growth. So as long as you don't have drainage that goes beyond the wide edges of that pad,
the dressing will stay in place for up to 14 days and then be removed. From the OR you will be put directly into your hospital bed and taken to recovery room. Here the nursing staff will continue to monitor your blood pressure, pulse and respiration. Monitor to see how alert you are and maintain a good comfort level for you. You will receive medication for pain and nausea as needed. The anesthesiologist is in charge of your care and recovery room and will decide when it's safe for you to leave the recovery area and go to the hospital room. You can expect to stay in the recovery room one to two hours. You may be there longer if the medical surgical floor is waiting for discharges. In those cases, they will let a family member come in to visit you while you are waiting for your hospital room. Once you are ready to leave recovery room, you will be taken to 3 West. These are some of the nurses who are happy to take care of you. Anyone wearing bright green is a registered nurse. Anyone in blue is a certified nursing assistant or a CNA. They are shown in front of a sign outside of our unit that says 3 West has been recognized twice in a row for being in the top 25% nationwide for patient satisfaction. So I know these people will take great care of you. For a coach or family or friends who are coming to visit you, let them know that when they enter the hospital, they will walk past the welcome center down the hall until they reach the second set of elevators the north wing elevators. They will take these elevators to the third floor. This is a view that they will have when they step off the elevator. From the elevator they will turn right, walk down the hallway till they reach 3 west on their left. The recovery room nurse will tell your family members when you are being transferred. You will be transferred to your private room in the hospital bed with your belongings. Once you are settled in your room, family members are allowed to visit. This is a view of the working side of your room. On the left side of your screen, you will see an information board that will be in your room. It has the people who are taking care of you on it, our goals for the day, what's important to you while you're here in the hospital, what's important to you after you leave, and the date we expect you to be discharged. It also has pain management and hourly rounding information on it. At the very top of this board you will see an arrow with one assist with a walker. This means that you are allowed to be up with one assist from staff to walk with a walker. Things we do for safety. One of the things we do is called medication barcoding. What that means is that the nurse will bring in your medications. She will ask you your name and date of birth. She will open the computer in your room to your name and date of birth. She will scan your name band with a laser wand. And if she has the right person record opened on the computer, this action will open another page with your list of medications. She will then scan your medications. This system ensures we provide the right medication to the right person at the right time. Post-operative checks are done every four hours for the first 24 hours. After 24 hours, they are done every eight hours. What this means is that the nurse is taking your blood pressure, temperature, pulse, and respiration. We also do hourly rounding, which means that a nurse or a CNA is checking on you every hour during the daytime hours and every two hours during the nighttime hours. They check to see if you need to go to the bathroom, to see if you need to change your position, if you need something for pain, if the call bell and phone is where you can reach it, if the bedside table is close enough to where you can reach things. If you are asleep, they will look at these things and make adjustments and initially in the hour slot to show that they visited. If they got you up to go to the bathroom, they will also put a T in that hour slot to let other people know that you got up to use the toilet during that time. 
If you are awake, they will ask you if there is anything else that they can do for you before they leave, and then they will enter their initials on the board. If you are sitting up in a chair and don't feel quite right, however, and you know that the nurse will be back in a half an hour, don't just sit there. Please ring the bell if something isn't right so the nurse can come in and attend you. For fall prevention, that is pretty simple. You're not allowed up by yourself unless it says so on the whiteboard. If you have permission, it will say up by self with a walker. Until then, you can only get up with the assistance of staff. I want to go back to the pain management for a moment. On the board is a pain management chart, 0 to 10. We will ask you to rate your pain or comfort level from 0 to 10, with 0 meaning no pain or very comfortable, and 10 meaning extreme pain. We will also ask you to set a pain goal, a functional level that you can tolerate as we help you get up, walk, and work with therapy. We want to know what a comfortable pain goal is going to be for you and we'll write that pain goal on the board. With that set, we don't wait until your pain level is a 7 or an 8 before you ask for an as-needed pain medicine. What we do to help prevent pain is give you Tylenol around the clock that will come without asking. You may get anti-inflammatory medication once or twice a day. You may also get a medicine called Lyrica that helps manage pain. And then if those things are not working, we also have as needed medications like Tramadol, which is between a Tylenol and a narcotic, and Oxycodone, which is the narcotic. Those are as needed medications and are written on the board to show you when you last received the pain medicine. Preventing complications, walking, drinking plenty of fluids, deep breathing, and hand washing are all things that you can do to help prevent complications after surgery. The most common complications for joint replacement patients are blood clots, constipation, lung problems, and infection. The best thing that you can do to help prevent all of these is to get up and walk. And that is why we start you walking on surgical day. Also, to help prevent blood clots, all patients will be on some sort of medication. In most cases, it will be taken by mouth. But you could also receive an injection once a day for eight days and then convert to aspirin twice a day for three weeks. We also use wraps around your leg from your knee to your ankle that are plugged into a machine at the foot of your bed. You will have these wraps on when you're in the bed and also when you're sitting in a chair. The wrap puts gentle compression on one calf, releases it, and does the same to the other calf. That action helps prevent blood clots. We also encourage you to do the ankle pump exercises frequently. To help with constipation, the nursing staff will have you walk, drink plenty of fluids, take a laxative if you need it, and a stool softener twice a day. We also have the recipe, which is a natural laxative and listed on a recipe card in your journal. Lung problems. You didn't come in here sick, and we don't want you going home with pneumonia. Shown on this slide is an incentive spirometer. This device is used to help keep your lungs healthy after surgery. Using the spirometer teaches you how to take slow, deep breaths. As you do, the white dial slowly rises to the middle of the device and the yellow piece on the right stays in the best and better area. This helps you focus on getting air deep into your lungs. We encourage you to use this spirometer every hour while you're awake. 
there will be a tracking sheet in your room and we'd like you to write it down when you use the device and how much volume you were able to get. We also encourage you to use their spirometer for the first week after you go home to prevent pneumonia. Preventing infection is pretty, insim is pretty simple. Good hand washing by you and by staff. If your dressing needs to be changed while you're here in the hospital, then whoever is doing it should be washing her hands before and after changing it and also should wear gloves while changing the dressing. In the far right photo, you can see one of our therapists showing you how to fit the walker to the right size for you. If you're standing in the walker with your arms to your side, the walker handles should be at the wrist level. That is the right height for you. If the handles are too high, you will have sore shoulders. If the handles are too low, you will be bent over while walking and have a sore back. So it is important to have the walker at the right height for you. Equipment after a joint replacement. Here are some of the equipment you will need after your joint replacement. Shown on the left is equipment that's common for both knee and hip replacement patients. The compression devices are worn on your legs to help prevent blood clots. The breathing device, the incentive spirometer, helps keep your leg, lungs clear after surgery. And a walker, often with wheels in the front, allows for safe early mobility. The wheels are interchangeable so you can have them on the inside of your walker instead of the outside. Having them on the inside allows you to go through doorways at home, such as the bathroom, which tend to be narrower. Your physician may have set you up with portable compression devices to use at home. If so, please charge them as directed. On the day you're discharged, they can be put on at the hospital so that you can wear them on your way home. The items in the middle section are only for patients who have had knee replacement surgery. The peddler is used for knee motion. It is fairly inexpensive and can be purchased at some department stores, at a store that sells medical equipment, or online. You will see this device, you will use this device several times during the day, one to three minutes at a time. You don't need to have the tension tight. The goal is to pedal all the way around using your stronger leg to help push you through. Often your surgical knee will be stiff in the morning. That's a good time to use the pedaler. Anytime your knee feels stiff, use the pedaler again. It is helpful to use the device for the first two weeks that you're home. Cold therapy is used to decrease swelling and pain around your knee. It will be on your knee most of the time, the two days that you're in the hospital. After that, it should be used 20 minutes at a time with a cloth barrier between your knee and the ice pad so your knee doesn't get too cold. You will use this 20 minutes at a time after you exercise and any time during the day that your knee is feeling achy and not quite time for pain medicine. With this machine, you can freeze bottles of water at home, bottles that are 20 ounces or less, place them in the machine, three to four frozen bottles will stand up in this machine, then you add water to the white fill line. The frozen bottles keep the water cold. Once you turn the machine on, the cold water circulates through the pad on your knee. You will use this device four to six times during the day to help with pain and swelling. Shown at the right are items that will be used by patients who have had hip replacement surgery. If you have had your hip replaced by a posterior surgical approach, you will use this yellow wedge with the narrow part at your knees and the wide part at your ankle for safe positioning after hip surgery. This wedge keeps you from crossing the operative leg over the non-operative leg and helps prevent dislocation. You will use the wedge overnight for your first night at the hospital, and then a soft pillow between your legs will be used after that. If you're sleeping, you need to use the wedge or a soft pillow to help keep your operative leg from crossing over the non-operative one. 
This is for a posterior surgical approach only. Shown below the wedge is a hip chair, a chair that's taller and easier for hip replacement surgery patients to get in and out of. It helps maintain posterior hip precaution. Shown at the bottom of the chair is a footstool that slides out. It does not elevate, it's just intended for patients to rest their feet on. Here is what your hospital schedule may look like. You will move the day of surgery with the help of a nurse, a physical therapist, or both. You will sit in a chair for your meals. Lab work will be drawn early in the morning. IV fluids most likely will be removed the morning after surgery. We will leave the needle in with a cap on it just in case you need to have any medications through it later. You will have a physical therapy sessions twice daily starting the day after surgery and an occupational therapy se session once a day. You will walk in the hall three to four times a day with help. For the rest of your schedule, refer to your journal and the whiteboard daily for more information. Now the first time you get up, you may feel a little dizzy or lightheaded. So if you're sitting on the edge of the bed and the room is spinning, please let us know. We will have you lie down and try to get up a little later. Shown in this photo, uh, wearing purple uniforms, are members of our therapy department, both physical and occupational. You may wonder how long you will be in the hospital after surgery. If you've had a total knee a replacement, expect to be in the hospital two overnights. If you've had a posterior hip replacement, expect to be in the hospital two overnights. If you've had an anterior hip replacement or a partial knee replacement, you may be here just one overnight. Shown in the photo are members of the 3 West team who will help make plans for a safe discharge. You may ask, how will I know when I'm ready to go home? These are some of the criteria we consider in determining if you're ready to be discharged. If you're able to walk household distances with a walker, able to get in and out of bed and a chair, you're able to take care of your daily needs, hopefully by yourself, you're able to go up and down stairs, and if we have managed your pain well. We can typically achieve these goals in one to two overnight stays. Shown on the photo at the left, is Trish, one of our occupational therapists, helping a patient use a sock aid, and Caleb, a physical th therapist working with a patient walking with a walker. Shown at the far right are examples of some ad adaptive equipment that you may use at home. Most of the time, these items are used by patients who have had hip replacement surgery because they have certain precautions they need to follow. If you've had your knee replaced, and are really struggling, however, your occupational therapist may issue you some of these equipments. The reacher is used to pick up uh, and move objects. The sock aid is used to put your socks on and avoid excessive hip flexion. And the long-handled spun allows you to wash and avoid excessive hip flexion by reaching all the way down to your feet. On pages 23 to 27 of your white binder or journal, you will find a series of pictures that show the correct posterior hip precautions and correct use of the adaptive equipment. Remember, this is for posterior hip replacement surgery patients only. Now you are ready to be discharged. Your discharge plan may include any of the following, outpatient physical therapy, home health physical therapy, inpatient rehab at a skilled nursing rehab center, or a combination of these. We will make a plan with you to meet your individual needs. Some patients may go home and have home health coming in before graduating to outpatient physical therapy. Others who have people to get them back and forth to an outpatient physical therapy may start here instead. And there are other patients who may need to go to a skilled nursing rehab center for a while before going home. And many times when you're ready to go home from a rehab center, home health is set up to start coming into the home for a transition. 
most folks are able to go directly home from the hospital after a one to two night overstay. Once you get home, you want to stay healthy for a speedy recovery. Insist that ill friends and family don't visit you. Always wash your hands before and after you change your dressing. Don't get your incision wet until it's okayed by your provider. You need to keep your incision clean and dry with a waterproof dressing on it for two weeks. This allows you to shower. Maintain a positive outlook and laugh often. That will help you get through the rough times. Eat healthy foods and drinks. Avoid smoking and excessive caffeine and alcohol use. If you have a few cups of coffee a day, that's not going to bother you. But if you have the coffee pot on all day long, that's way too much caffeine. And alcohol is not a good combination with your pain meds and whatever you're taking to help prevent blood clots. And last but not least, always keep your pain under control. Probably your worst day is going to be at the hospital. And then you'll slowly get better every day. So what will you do when you get home? You're going to move often. Do the exercises you learned in the hospital. Allow for rest periods with your legs elevated. If you've had your knee surgery, you should have your leg out straight and elevated. Use cold therapy 20 minute intervals, either for your hip or knee, and always have a cloth barrier between the ice pad and your skin. Do your ankle pumps often when you're sitting and resting. You should do your exercises three times a day. Sit in a comfortable chair. If the comfortable chair is a recliner with a lever on the side to raise and lower the foot rest, that's allowable. If the recliner has a rocker, you may want to block the front of the walker so the recliner doesn't rock too far forward and make it hard for you to get out of. If you've been sitting in a chair for an hour, it's time to get up and walk around the home with your walker. You may want to have a bag tied to the front of your walker so you can keep things that you want to use in it, such as the phone, the newspaper, a book you're reading, a bottle of water with a cover, a coffee mug with a cover, or you may want to wear an apron to hold small items. Drink plenty of fluids to help prevent constipation from your pain medicine and a variety of fluids alternating between water, apple juice, cranberry juice, or Gatorade. And keep your goals in mind. What did you want to accomplish with your surgery? Most people want to get rid of the pain and be able to get around better and more comfortably. Is there a special function coming up that you'd like to go to? Whatever that care it is, keep it out in front of you so you can attain that goal. Follow up. Keep any follow-up appointments you have. Call your health care provider if you have any problems or go to your local emergency department immediately if the situation is serious. Expect to have some swelling that will go down as you recover. We advise you to keep your legs elevated when you're resting to help with this process. You may also experience some bruising around your hip or knee depending on the type of surgery you had. This bruising often will extend down your leg as you recover. Be careful to avoid any prolonged standing in your first few weeks at home. We want you to get up and move around, but only for a few minutes at a time every hour or so. We don't want you standing for an hour at a time the first couple of weeks of your recovery. If you would like to walk in your yard, please have someone with you because the ground is uneven and it isn't like walking in your home. Think of safety first. Avoid prolonged vehicle rides for the first two weeks of your recovery. You will gradually increase your activity level as you recover. Thank you for listening to this program. Please contact me by email and provide your name and date of your surgery so I know you have listened to this program. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email me with your questions. We look forward to helping you recover from your joint replacement surgery.